There is no better place to discuss Ralph Waldo Emerson's nature than in nature. And there's no better way to relieve your back than to take the book out of the backpack and sit down and discuss nature. As you're looking at the text on page 219, Emerson, from this piece of his essay, Nature, talks about how blind man is to the woods, to nature, to the beauty that is around him because they are caught up in the world and all the mumbo jumbo and shenanigans of life. And in that rigmarole, we miss it all, which is amazing again because it's 1845 and you're probably wondering what the heck were they doing that was busy. But if you look there, he says, that if the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how would men believe and adore? Meaning, if the stars only came out once every thousand years, everybody would line up to look at them because of the unbelievable beauty. Yet because they come out every night, nobody appreciates it. Every night if you look up in the stars, even though there's a limited amount of stars where we live, you generally can see Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus at various times of the day. And then even lately, the moon has been sitting with Venus and Saturn above it, below it, to the side of it as it moves around. I've even tried to take pictures of it, you know, and encourage you to go outside. I put it on Instagram to go outside and check it out. It's celestial and, and uh, fascinating, but it's there every night, so we don't appreciate it. And he talks about that on the second page, 220. As he, he says that, um, that about the sun, you know, coming out every day and the, the light doesn't shine into men's eyes, but he says it shines into the eye and the heart of a child. That people who keep a certain simplicity of, uh, of the world, a childlike nature, can enjoy the leaves that are, you know, all around me here. Can not care that it was raining the whole time I was walking and just stopped. Um, doesn't sit at home all day long watching football hoping that something happens on that field to make their life of some importance and goes out and grabs life by themselves and enjoys in the serenity of nature hello bird you can hear him but he says um, to speak truly, few adults, persons can see nature. It's the opening paragraph. And he, 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 you know, most of these guys just talk in aphorisms. They, they will start off a paragraph on an aphorism and then sort of cycle back and explain it, you know. It's almost like a standard essay. You know, you have a topic sentence at the beginning and you keep talking about it. But towards the bottom, and this is something I can relate to that I hope that uh, you guys as students learning about transcendentalism can figure it out, learn about it. Four lines from the bottom of 220, he says, crossing a bare common. A common then is just a uh, grounds, um, open field. In snow puddles, at twilight, under a clouded sky, without having in my thoughts any occurrence of special good fortune, I have enjoyed a perfect exhilaration. And if you go out sunrise or sunset and purposely uh, look at it, separate yourself from everyone. Um, I found one of the best, and I know exactly what he's talking about for a snowy evening, because if it snows at night, I will go outside walking because it is perfectly still. It is perfectly quiet. Uh, you hear nothing because generally when it's snow, most people um, crawl inside Usually the snow plows don't come out until most of the snow has fallen. But you can hear just absolute quiet and serenity. And if the moon is out at all, uh, it shines on the snow and lightens everything up. Uh, where I live, uh, by Cincinnati, the city lights reflect off the cloudy skies and come back down and it illuminates everything. And it's perfect exhilaration, he says. It's peacefulness, it's harmony with nature. On 221, second line, he says, in the woods is perpetual youth. Always feel young out here, even in the fall and the autumn. Even in the winter when there's nothing, everything's bare. Uh, he says it's a perennial festival dressed 
you know, in, in garb, either budding leaves, full growth, autumn foliage, or the barrenness of winter. Um, but he says in the woods, he returns to reason and faith. Those are two good things to return to. And then finally, it is one of his most famous lines, or the most famous line from this piece. He says, standing on the bare ground, my head bathed by the blithe air and uplifted into infinite space, all mean egotism vanishes. I become, and here it is, a transparent eyeball. I am nothing. I see all. The currents of the universal beings circulate through me. What he's saying in that weird transparent eyeball is that he becomes sort of one with nature, in tune, if you will. And it's a um, ethereal moment where he's just one with everything. And he's not worried about anything else. He's not worried about the trials and tribulations of life. He's just simply part of nature. So I suggest uh, emphatically that you try it out. Don't be stuck in the house until springtime. All right, go outside, be outside, put a coat on, gloves, hat, okay, take some pictures. If you want to see some crazy stuff, you know, or some wild uh, transcendental adventures, you know, um, I have all kinds of transcendental items on uh, Instagram, a two-week odyssey all the way to Key West and back with a chocolate bar. Again, good times to be had, and with that, I bid you adieu.